And we're back with more of the Pokemon film. Hey, buddy, guess what? What? No, you've got to guess. you got to yeah. actually guess. Oh. Those, those plastic things that are on the end of your shoelaces? No, 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 no my THC compadre. It's homework time once again on the old yeah. Pope on Film podcast. The Pope on Film podcast is not for everyone. <laughs> it may cause weight gain, weight loss, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, yeah. suicidal thoughts, bloppy knees, yeah. and in a small percentage of patients, death. Tell your doctor right away if you experience death. Do not listen to the Pope on film if you are allergic to the Pope on film because the doy. Common side effects of the Pope on film podcast include irritability, non irritability, nervousness, anal bleeding, sleepiness, wakefulness, wakeful sleep, sleepy wakefulness, <laughs> farmer's hips, nervousness, nervousness, nervousness. <laughs> Cancer of the bird flu of the AIDS, squirrel stampedes, plastic teeth, leprosy, double vision, dry mouth, dry butt, triple vision, quadruple vision, plumber's throat, amberness, knobby knees, jello face, drumpy fingers, polio, scarlet fever. Yellow fever, burnt sienna fever, Roy G. Biv fever, hobbit's feet, King Kong attacks, and fever. Do not drink alcohol while listening to the Pope on Film podcast as alcohol may impair your ability to listen. Do not operate heavy machinery while listening to this podcast until you know what how Bunny and Steve affect you. Ask your doctor if the Pope on Film podcast is right for you. The Pope on Film, America's 1,406th favorite podcast. Drops mic. <laughs> then picks up Mike and dusts Mike off because that's rude. Mics are like crazy expensive. Yeah. So I don't I know why. He just tossed around like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're expensive pieces of machinery because that's really what they are machinery. So I don't know why so many people are always dropping mics. You know, that's heard that hurts the equipment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I just figured it out. Light bulb. I just figured out who is behind rappers and other such people dropping the mic. Who? Oh. Big microphone. <gasps> it's a big conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Big microphone is giving money to all of these rappers so that they drop mics so that People will drop mics at home and then have to buy new mics. It's all a big conspiracy. Uh, I, I, I think I got to agree. We have uncovered the truth behind Big Microphone. Yes, Maxwell. Big Microphone is a myth and Maxwell. Big Microphone is a what? Myth. It's a what? Myth. Oh, it's a myth. Okay. So people, have, because... They're cool. People drop mics because they're cool. Yeah. But I, so, so big mic is just a MILF. Myth. Oh, a myth. I thought you said MILF. So it's a myth. Yeah. Okay. It's just a myth. It's just a myth, guys. <laughs> just a myth. Yes. The yes. You you uncovered it, Maxwell. Thank you. Thank you. You're you're the you're the the, the king of the world. Anyway, what were we doing? Oh yeah. Ahem. Ahem. Haven't even gotten to the intro yet. What? People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your rage tweeting and kindly pay attention! Each week, the dreaded and vaguely 1970s sounding Council of Church Organists. 
descends from their silver shimmery citadel in the clouds and selects a homework assignment for our show via the fiery ritual of carousel. And you know, I would love yeah. to film the whole mystical ancient process of picking a homework assignment each week, but unfortunately, you know, no cameras allowed. It's the same in the Supreme yeah. Court. It's the same. It, actually, it's the same in the Supreme Court, and it's the same at glory holes in conservative states. Because <laughs> you know, because uh, ministers don't want to be filmed getting a protein shot in the mouth. No. Believe you me. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it's a homework assignment that has been fortified, ratified, and sanctified with the expressed intent of bettering society. Nay, all mouth breathers everywhere, but not you, trouts. Oh. Oh. Maxwell, stop chewing loudly into the microphone just to upset me, okay? Please. Stop chewing loudly in the microphone. In fact, all fish are hereby banned from, from listening to the rest of this podcast. Oh, good. Fuck them. Okay? And, and I'm serious. If you're listening to this, and I'm serious, if you're listening to this near fish, you either need to stop listening right now or move to a different room. Or here is another idea for you. Put some earmuffs on your fish. Yeah. That, that, know, would, that would be we, helpful. Yeah, every fish owner should have a pair of fish earmuffs already. So just slap those, slap those on your fish. And this week, buddy, this week, I want you to know that all the weirdos in the world are here in New York City tonight. Yes, they are. Here in New York City tonight. Here in New York City tonight. This week, we are discussing the spectacularly awful Broadway musical known as Spider Man Turn Off the Dark. Or as I have it written throughout my notes, S M T O T D. So, Simitotted. 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 Uh, music by U2. Actually, it's just Bono on the Edge, but aren't they just U2? Yeah, I think so. Who well, else is in U2? Anybody? I don't know. And, but Bueller? He, I, I, I don't, Bueller? I don't, I don't know who else is in U2, but here's the thing. I don't think Bono on the Edge do either. <laughs> I think if you asked Bono, he'd be like, oh, shoot, what's the name of our drama? Ah. Uh, it's on the tip of my. It's on the tip of me tongue. I don't know how to do a U two impersonation. Because what are they Irish? I don't know. I, I don't know. If you had a chance to change your feet, I don't. Know. I don't. I can't do an Irish. You had a chance to change your feet. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, that's the only Irish I know. Is the Disney, the Irish Disney princess. Uh, Brave was was her name Brave? What Julie yeah. Brave? Oh, Merit yeah. Merida Brave. Merida Brave. Merida. In the previews, she says, "If you had a chance to change your feet, would you would you do it?" And it's like, no, I'm not going to change my feet. I like my feet. Yeah. And also, I'm not fully sure what you're saying. I'll change these feet. And you can why, why feet. are you so so hung up about my feet anyway? Yeah, it's kind of it weird. weird. Disney film. Yeah, I Disney is exploring all sorts of new fetishes, aren't they? Yeah, I, I have, I have what many people, what many people have referred to as hobbits' feet. Hobbits' feet, really? I have hobbits' feet. Explain hobbits' feet, because I have, I have hobbits' feet. They are Celtic feet. Okay. I have feet that are uh, big and fat and bony and hairy. Those are my feet. Okay. I have hairy, bony feet. I have hobbit feet. <clears throat> my feet are surprisingly hairy for a man who can barely grow one strand on my chest. Mine are not that hairy, but they are, they are classic <clears throat> Celtic feet where they are very short 
but they are very wide. Okay, well, it is time for bed, so go brush your teeth, dude. Which makes getting shoes very difficult. I would imagine so. I, I my, my feet are so hairy. I, I'm not sure how I got Robin Williams' feet, <laughs> but I did. And it's, uh, it's an issue. So, SMTOTD, music by U2, and at first... <clears throat> it's important to note that at first directed by Broadway legend and pretty famous movie director, Julie Taymor. Mm. The story of this piece of, um, of homework, Spider-Man turn on, turn off the dark on Letterman. The story that leads us to this video is so batshit crazy. There's a freaking book about it. Really? Yeah, 384 pages published by Simon and Schuster. We had it at work for a while. It's called Song of Spider-Man, the inside story of the most controversial musical in Broadway history. Controversial. And it's written by Glenn, Yeah, it's written by Glenn Berger and he writes it from an insider's perspective because he was actually hired to co-write the book. Huh. I mean, co co-write the actual play with Julie Taymor. So he's like a co-writer of this actual musical. The story of this musical is cray cray, cray cray, which is short for, which is long for crazy. Yeah. In fact, the story is so crazy that it was a struggle for me over this past week to keep this story short. <laughs> okay. As a result of that, I may one day come back to this story and tell it again in Steve's historical approximations, because that's how wonderful of a story this is. Okay. That this story could be so much longer, <clears throat> but I had to struggle to make it shorter. So I may come back to this. But basically, Marvel announced, hey... We're doing a Broadway musical about Spider-Man, and it was going to be produced by legendary movie and theatrical producer Tony Adams. This guy has been in business for in the movie producing business for a really long time. He produced. Uh, he was an executive producer for six of the Pink Panther movies. Yeah. He was one of the executive producers for the movie Ten. Not only did he help create the movie Victor Victoria, but then he also helped adapt it into an actual play. Uh huh. Okay. So this guy, big time producer, big old school Hollywood, and he also produced a lot of plays and off Broadway plays. So this guy really knew his stuff. Okay. Yeah. So Marvel taps. Tony Adams to produce it, and Tony kind of a Adam kind of a Sandy Wexler type, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Marvel taps Tony Adams. Tony Adams decides that he's going to snag a big name to direct the Spider-Man musical. Julie Taymor. She is a big name. She was the director of the stage, the Broadway musical, The Lion King, uh -huh. and people. People laughed at the idea of a Lion King musical, but that bitch won Best Musical at the Anthony's, which is what I like to call them because I don't know them well enough. Yeah. And it, it's a really amazing play, and it really brings the story of the Lion King back to, like, African roots and, like, uh, you, you know, these, these people, while they're acting, they're also holding these puppets these giant puppets and it's 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 a beautiful play it's still running in fact that uh, the lion king musical is the number three longest running broadway musical of all time really yes i did not know that yeah and it sweeped the anthony's the that year and it it is just a legendary musical it is a legendary musical Number three, longest running Broadway musical of all time. So then when she was done with that, she's like, oh, you can do whatever you want. And what she did is she moved to Hollywood and she directed the movie Frida with Salma Hayek. Oh, that shit was nominated for six freaking Oscars. And let me tell you something. It would have been nominated for best director if she was a man. Yes. Is that the way that the Oscars work? 
Um, she also did the movie musical Across the Universe, which is okay. <laughs> that's the that's the Beatles movie musical that they made. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not the best, but it it's it's okay. Bono was in that. He sang "I Am the Walrus," so uh, that's important to note. So, so before Tony Adams snagged a director, Tony Adams first hired Bono and The Edge to do the music because they were itching to do a rock opera. They're like, "No, oh, we want to really do a rock opera." I don't, I don't do Irish voices. I, I can't do it. So. Dude, Max Bella, stop torturing your brother. So they were itching to do a rock opera, and, and so Tony Tony Adams hired Bono and the Edge, and it was Bono and the Edge. It was Bono who said, well, we just did a movie with Julie Tamor. How about her? We're apparently British now. <laughs> So Tony Adams hired her, and basically, here's the simple version of what went wrong with the Spider-Man musical. Julie Taymor is really good at working with people, working with a company. She worked in tandem with her producers for the Lion King musical. She worked hand-in-hand -hand with Disney, and together, they made this amazing musical. So she was excited. Wow! Julie Taymor is going to be working side by side with legendary film and stage producer Tony Adams. Man, they are all set to, to work together to make this wonderful Spider-Man musical. Then, a few months into the proceedings, Tony Adams says, Yeah, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm just going to take a bit of time off. I'm a wee bit sick, okay? I'll be back, all right? Mm-hmm. Two days after that announcement, Tony Adams fucking dies. Oh, that is not cool. I mean, isn't she under contract? She could be sued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th I think Tony Adams is a dude. Just yeah. to be. Oh, yeah? But, okay. But yeah. Yeah, so Tony Adams freaking dies. And usually in uh, the world of theater, if like the head producer dies, they're like, oh, we should probably quit because now it's like in bad taste or whatever. But uh, so they're all like, should we keep going? So what happens is Tony Adams has a partner and his partner now has all of the money. And so Tony Adams's partner goes, well, I can be the producer if you want. I mean, I've got the money right here. How about I'm the producer now? So Tony Adams' partner takes over as producer, and this dude, this random guy who's just the producer because he has he's in charge of the money now. Yeah. He knows nothing of theater. He knows nothing of movies. He knows nothing of pro of producing. Period. He just gives Julie Taymor complete control and a crap ton of money. <laughs> And so Julie Taymor goes, I'm mad with power! And just does whatever the fuck she wants. So she creates a musical and it goes into previews and then there's technical problems and then there's reckless stunts where people are seriously hurt. Not to mention that the musical as a whole is just crazy nuts. So as they're doing previews, the way it is is that we're going to do previews for a while to air out the kinks a little bit here and there, maybe change this line, maybe change the pacing here. And then uh, after a few weeks, after maybe a month or two of previews, maybe like uh, maybe even three months of previews, then we're going to have our actual premiere. And by the time we actually premiere it, it's going to be perfect. Well, they went into they were in previews and they were really constantly constantly rewriting matches massive swatches of this of this musical because the whole musical is just crazy so yeah. really bad decisions are made mary jane's hardly in it originally there was a greek chorus of high school kids that narrated everything <laughs> okay original bad guy slash girl was a giant female spider who had an army of female spiders, but before we take over New York, let's go shopping! 
There was a Spider Army shopping musical number. Oh, God. So it was bad. So they were constantly having to rewrite the whole play while doing previews. And it gets so bad that they don't want to see the reviews because theater critics don't review things while it's in previews. That's always just been the the way it is hey they're in previews so they're still trying to air out the kinks of of doing it on stage so we won't do a full review until you are ready to premiere it so they push they push the premiere back they push the official premiere date back and just keep doing the musical and previews and then it's like okay well, so now they're ready to premiere, and then they're like, oh, now we got to completely rewrite Act 1. Yeah, let's push the pre the premiere back a few more months. Let's push the premiere back a few more months, and we're going to have to completely take down all of these sets, redo these sets. Okay, let's push the premiere back. So the musical quickly became, one, the longest preview time for a Broadway play ever. <laughs> okay. And... Two, the most expensive Broadway musical ever of all time. Really? Yes. My God, uh, even even over over things that had like production value, like Phantom of the Opera or Les Mis yeah. or anything like that, which you know, there's a fucking boat on stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most expensive musical of all time. During this time, they go on David Letterman. And they do uh, the u 2 East song in the play. That is not this video. They yeah. actually perform twice on David Lenman, which is why in the beginning he does say, please welcome back the cast of Spider-Man, turn off the dark. So this is, that way the, our homework assignment was their second time uh-huh. in the, in the, on David Letterman. The, this, the first time that they were on, uh, yeah, the Green Goblin wasn't even in the the musical. Norman Osborn wasn't in, even in the musical. It was a very different musical. So, so, so they they performed twice: one with Julie Taymor and one without Julie Taymor, because it's obvious uh, after months and months and months and months and months and months and months of previews that the Spider-Man musical is in huge trouble and and they can't even get to their opening freaking night. So they go on hiatus and they just literally, we're going to break down this script and completely rewrite it. We we're going to need a couple of new musical numbers. We're going to have to throw these musical numbers out, rewrite these other musical numbers. And while they're doing that, um, they kick out Julie Taymor. Huh. Okay. And and they put in someone who's not Julie Taymor. I don't. I I, I didn't look it up. Okay. I didn't look it up whoever they got. Can but, we can we just say Jeffrey Tambor? Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Because this. Yeah. Yeah. So. So they rewrite the whole shebang. New songs, new sets. Mary Jane is now the love interest. Uh, they focus more on his origin story. They 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 keep closer to the to the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies. There's no Greek chorus anymore. No more shopping spiders. The 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 spider bad guy is now this sort of mystical. Uh, spider goddess who occasionally comes to uh, Peter Parker in dreams. The, the Web uh, Widow or something, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, Madam Web, I Madam think, Web. or something. Yeah. And uh, they add one or two show stopping musical numbers in there and a whole new series of bad guys in the Green Goblin and the Sinister Six. Yeah. So yeah, somehow, somehow, Despite all of their problems and people getting injured and uh, so many problems that they have, somehow they come back. Spider Man turn on turn off the dark goes into preview. Turn previews. on the dark. That's a whole different movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They go into previews and then they go into more previews and then they go into even more previews and then they go into even 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 more previews. But they eventually do do it. Eventually, the musical opens. The musical has an official premiere, and it does play in Broadway for a number of years. It it, it, it played for a number of years. Really? Okay. 
like like three or four years uh, but but it's in no way a success in fact financially it's one of the biggest broadway bombs ever but they did do it. You know, they they did get it on the stage. It took forever and some someone had to die. <laughs> you know, but they did it, you know? Yeah. So in order to promote the, the Spider-Man Mach 2, you know, because already, like, they come back finally and they do have a, a more coherent musical. Of course, by now, every you know stand-up comedian is doing spider-man turn off the dark jokes and it, you know it, it spider-man turn off the dark dark is just a laughing stock so it's like okay everyone is already ready to hate us yeah how do we come back and and, and get people to like it so they they went to bono and they went to the edge and they said okay we'll try and write a really good song for you and that is this to promote Spider-Man Mach 2, the cast returns to David Letterman to do their brand new uh, show-stopping musical number, A Freak Like Me Needs Company. And here we are, long story, but again, I'm leaving out a lot. In fact, I have a list of things I'm leaving out in this story. I left out Andrew Lloyd Webber throwing shade. I uh, left out the part in mid uh mid previews where disney bought marvel i left out all the injuries i left out the time that the state of new york fined the play and i left out the 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 vegas show and the the world tour that never happened so oh. here we here we are finally to the homework bunny what are your thoughts on this video what are my thoughts on this video i think this was some weird fucking shit but I, I think it's weird because it's David Letterman, you know? Um, I wound up watching this and a, and a few other things from Spider-Man, whatever. Uh, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah. I, what it looks like is, it looks like Cirque du Soleil Spider-Man. Uh, is what I, it looks like. I, I think I got to agree with that, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can see that. I showed it to Emerald a few nights ago. It must it, the 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 David Letterman uh, freak like me needs company. It must have been like the sixth or seventh time that I had seen the video, and, and it was her first time seeing it. And she spent most of the video Probably. loudly, loudly exclaiming that although she was seeing and hearing it, there's no way that it could, that it could have existed. <laughs> and, and I'm just showing her the video and she's just watching it going no this doesn't exist I mean I know I'm watching it but there's no way this exists this does not exist Yeah. what am I watching well there was a Broadway play no 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 that didn't happen there's no <laughs> way that this, there's no way that this existed it definitely doesn't look like a Broadway play for, for shit's sake and it, what if what it feels like to me? No offense. It looks like you're at Six Flags. You have a churro in your hand. Your best girly by your side. Oh look, it's the Spider-Man stage show spectacular. Yeah. I'll head over there. Ah, it's free. And then 15 minutes in, they start performing this song, and you laugh your ass off and tiptoe out to go ride the rickety wooden roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know much about Broadway or anything like that. Um, I, I just wasn't seeing anything overwhelmingly awful. I mean, well, the Green Goblin kind of looked ridiculous, but he looked ridiculous in the fucking movie, too. He did. Yeah, he did. Um, the... And, but let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, I, I'm watching it with, with Emerald, and then Emerald is like, oh, this song is horrible. And I'm like, I don't know. It, it, I, I kind of like it. I especially like the, in New York City, especially because you, like, you're watching this on Broadway. That line is probably like a cheap pop, like Mick Foley. Yeah. It, that's like a cheap Mick Foley pop. Triple H, I'm going to kick your ass right here in Greensboro. And then everybody cheers. Yeah. So, um. So I downloaded 
the original Broadway cast recording version of the song of Freak Like Me Needs Company. Yeah. And it's a real different song between hearing them perform it on David Letterman and hearing what is basically just like a pretty all right U2 song. That's the difference between the cast recording and watching this video. I love that song. I stayed up so late drinking and listening to that song over and over again that now that song is on like my top 25 most listened to songs of all time on my phone really okay that nice that's good so late listening to this song over and over again that now it's one of my most listened to songs i'm bugging the kids with lines from it all the time <laughs> It's really great. I love the song. And uh, uh, God bless Donald Trump making a joke about his mom on the way out of this video. Yeah. That's yeah. He's a, you know, they finish the number and then they're all taking their costumes out and everyone's cheering. And David Letterman's trying to walk through the massive crowd of people and bad guys. And he's like, oh, hey, 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 look at that. Oh, look at that thing there. Oh, wow. This is crazy. And he says. Uh, a, a very Letterminian thing to say. He says, "Oh wow, this is crazy. It's like a, it's like a party at my mom's house." <laughs> yeah. Oh God bless you, David Letterman. You were always talking about your mom, always having her on the show and stuff. God, I wish David Letterman was still on the air when Donald Trump became president. You know. Yeah. Like we need, we need. We need a David Letterman on the air. We need a... We need a hero. We need, we need a hero! <laughs> I need a hero! <laughs> we need a... We need a... We need a... Uh, John Stewart. Yes. And no offense to the South African guy. <laughs> He's all right. He is all right. I like him. We need a Bill Hicks. A Bill Hicks. Oh my God. What this what this specific musical number looks like is, is that it looks it's so neon that you could easily be confused and think, "Am I watching Batman and Robin the musical?" Uh huh. Did Joel Schumacher direct this play? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a ridiculously neon. And now, by the way, Batman and Robin is back on Netflix, so everybody go check it out. I, I have watched it again. Yes. God, that freaking movie. <laughs> now, there are Broadway bootlegs out there. People who record Broadway plays. Um, most of them are removed from YouTube, but I guess because SMTOTD is now done, the bootleg is on YouTube. But funny. Yeah. I don't hate you enough. <laughs> Wait, were you kidding? I downloaded it. I know. And they, I found and it I, too, and I downloaded it, and I'm like, what the fuck? We'll give it a try. The sound is shit. The sound is so yeah. difficult to pay attention to. But I like the fact that they kept the whole uh, human spider portion. Human spider? Yeah, you know, it, at first... Spider-Man wants to test out his power, so he goes into a professional wrestling ring. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But they didn't keep Bonesaw, which is good, because with Randy Macho Man Savage Dead, there can only be, you know, he was the only Bonesaw McGraw. And speaking of which, I was watching Iron Man 3 again, and there are a good couple of dead people in there. Yeah? Like, I noticed Joan Rivers... And Miguel Ferrer, and oh. I, 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 there were a couple of others, and it, it was kind of freaking me out. Was like, I always are dead. Always hate that when they get like the celebrity who has a show or whatever to have a a cameo on the movie talking about the characters. Screw you, Joe Rogan! I'm yeah. so pissed about Bright. <laughs> His podcast with an orc. Yeah. And and I I I I I know my Spider-Man comic books, but I swear to God there was not a B guy. I don't remember a B guy. 
And I swear to God, there wasn't a black Grace Jones made out of knives. Yeah, I don't remember her either. Yeah. And I always was a huge fan of Electro, and I'm really sad that now he is the human sparkler. <laughs> Very sad about that. Mm-hmm. But Spider-Man, turn off the dark. Uh, all you have to remember is that all the weirdos in the world are here in New York City tonight. Yes. Here in New York City tonight. Here in New York City tonight. That's all you have to remember. I know that. <laughs> What's in Hamilton? I successfully got Bella absolutely batshit obsessed with Hamilton, and she just spends all of so much time like listening to Hamilton. And like uh, the other day, I caught her. She was writing down all the lyrics to the yes, first song, was. Alexander Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 makes my heart happy. Now the next thing you got to get into, Bella. No, Spider Man, no, no, turn no, off the dark. No, no, music no, by Bono no. and The Edge. So essentially, music no. by U two. No. Yeah. It just it, it's exciting. It's an exciting musical. That's our next obsession. No. Yep. I will see. You could be a part of history because people are going to be talking about this for a long, long time to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is it for homework this week. And we sincerely hope that your hearts, minds, and financial records have all been suitably opened. That feeling that you're feeling right now, that's healing. That's (laughs) breathe deep. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Ah, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho O. Which is a combination of bucko and muchacho. So, buck chacho o verbal copyright 2008. The Pope on film all rights reserved until infinity. Don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are discussing. Finally, we might be the first podcast in America to discuss the threat that is plaguing all of society. Demons in cloned transsexual bodies. Yes. Uh-huh. Next week, we are going to go balls deep in the world of a YouTube account named Yahweh Rules 2. It's important to choose Yahweh Rules 2 and not Yahweh Rules 1 because that's a different that's a different YouTube account. With a YouTube playlist of this man's best strangest rants. The playlist is on my YouTube page. It is called Crazy Oklahoma 2018. It's called Crazy Oklahoma 2018 because I didn't want to call it Crazy Oklahoma in 2018. Because guess what? This guy who we're going to be talking about, yeah, he follows he follows me on YouTube now. Oh, you're kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This crazy guy has followed me on YouTube. We'll get to all of that next week. That is next week. Be sure and join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. (laughs) And cut.